we knew that Johnny Demering had only one market to deal in, only one type of customer he was acquainted with, the teenager. In previous transactions, we knew the youngsters received only a low-grade type of narcotic, highly diluted. We knew that if Demering succeeded in dispensing the highly concentrated store he had on hand, and the juvenile customers he served tried it on themselves, it would very likely result in death. 11 a.m., Wednesday. Despite all our efforts, Johnny Demering and the store of high-grade narcotics which he'd hijacked from Jocko Harris were still missing. Wednesday, 12 noon, we began rechecking every one of the possible sources that might lead us to the suspect. One of them was the boy's mother, a Mrs. Frances Demering. We talked to her at her work. She was employed as a motograph operator in the mailing department of a large downtown department store. Not since the last time you talked to me, officer. I haven't heard a word from my boy, nothing at all. Have you heard anything? Well, yes, ma'am, in a way. We've got an ID still somewhere in the city. That's why we figured we'd come back and talk to you again. Have you been in touch with your relatives in town recently, Ms. Demering? I mean, those Johnny might possibly contact. Yes, there's just my sister and my mother. They're the only ones I think Johnny'd go to in a case like this. Maybe because he's in trouble and all. I only wish I could have stopped the whole thing. I mean, even before it started. It should never have even started. Yes, ma'am. I guess it just wasn't to be right from the start. Johnny's father ran away, you know. I tried my best after that. It never seemed to be enough. I suppose there's no getting away from it. A boy needs a father. You can try all you want. They still need a father. Some kind of discipline. Yes, ma'am. Well, how about the relatives you have out of town, Ms. Demering? Any word from them at all about Johnny? No, Sergeant, nothing. As a matter of fact, I've been waiting for a letter. Nothing at all. Do you have any idea at all where Johnny most likely go in town if he didn't want to be seen, Mrs. Demery? Where he'd go? No, I wouldn't know that, Sergeant. First place, Johnny's never really been in trouble before. I mean, where he'd have to hide. He's always been good to me, maybe too good. I wouldn't know that. Well, how about Johnny's school friends, ma'am? Would there be any one of them he might possibly contact in a jam? None that I haven't told you about before, I don't think. Evelyn. She's the only one I suppose Johnny'd go to if he needed help, if he was in trouble. That's his girlfriend at the high school, Evelyn Maxford. Yes, that's right. Sweet girl. How about a girlfriend that Johnny was supposed to have downtown somewhere, Miss Demling? Would you know anything about her? Nothing really, no. I knew Johnny had some other girl besides Evelyn. He did mention she lived downtown. Guess that's all I know about her. Her name was Betty, I think. Johnny mentioned it once. That's all I know about her, though. You have no idea where she lived downtown? No, I don't. Johnny and his girlfriends. That was one thing I tried not to pry into. All right, ma'am. Thank you very much. Appreciate it if you'd notify us if you hear anything at all about your son. All right. Thank you. Tomorrow's Johnny's birthday, you know. I meant to tell you. I always expect Johnny home on his birthday. Seems no matter where he is, how he's tied up with his school or sports or something, Johnny always makes it home for his birthday. I see. wonder how it'll be tomorrow. He's never missed being home on his birthday, not once. Well, if he shows up, I guess you can count on one thing, ma'am. What's that? We might have to miss next year. 2 p.m., Frank and I picked up a glass of milk and a hot dog for lunch, and then we continued making a check of Johnny Demering's closest friends. Next in line after his mother was Demering's high school girlfriend, Evelyn Maxford. We located her at home. She seemed unusually nervous as we interviewed her. No, there's nothing wrong. It's just all this business about Johnny, all this trouble. I've been upset ever since I heard about it. You haven't heard from Johnny at all, Miss Maxford. He's made no attempt to contact you since the last time we talked. I haven't heard a word, officer. I know tomorrow's his birthday. His mother's expecting him home. I know he won't come, though. I'm sure of that. How are you sure, ma'am? Well, I just know that's all. I guess he should give himself up and take his chances. But I know he won't. I know Johnny that well. He just isn't that type. I'd like to ask you again, ma'am. Yes? Are you sure you haven't heard from Johnny Demering recently in the past two days or so? No. That's what I told you. Don't you believe me? Do you know why we're so anxious to locate Johnny, Miss Maxford? Well, I think so. It's about the narcotics business. You say Johnny had a hand in it. He was selling those things to the kids. I still don't believe it myself. It's a lot more than that, the way it stands now, Miss Maxford. What do you mean? When he was at school, Johnny was kept supplied with narcotics by a man named Jocko Harris. He's what we call a pusher, a kind of an in-between supply man in the narcotics trade. Uh -huh. Two nights ago, Johnny caught up with Harris. He beat him up badly enough to send him to the hospital with a skull fracture. And then Johnny stole every bit of narcotics Harris had in his room, some of the strongest stuff he can buy on the market. That's why we want Johnny, Miss Maxford. I don't think I understand. What does it mean? Well, it means that most of the teenage kids Johnny's been supplying stuff to have been getting fairly weak grades of heroin. If he gets some of this stuff to them and the kids start taking it, it might prove too strong for them. If they take too much of it, it could kill them outright. Oh, no. Now you see what we're up against. We've got to find that boy, and we've got to find him soon. Couldn't you talk to his mother? Maybe she could tell you something. We already have, miss. She couldn't tell us anything. That's why we halfway depended on you. Why do they have to put it in my lap? Why does it have to be me? I liked Johnny for a while. 
I don't know what to think now. Have you heard from him, Miss Maxford? There's no reason to be afraid. You'd probably feel a lot worse if something happened to one of the high school kids, wouldn't you? Miss Maxford? I got a call from him yesterday. Johnny. He wouldn't tell me where he was. I asked him, but he wouldn't tell me. Well, what else did he say? He knows everybody's looking for him. He doesn't know about the stuff that he stole, though. I'm sure of that. He doesn't know what it could do. Did he make any dates with you? Did he want to see you? Yes, he wants to see me. He wants me to meet him this evening. Where? He's going to tell me. Excuse me, I'll have to get the phone. Hello? Yes? Oh, but I don't know. I don't, really. What? Bye, sweetie. All right. Yes. Yes, I'll meet you then. All right. Bye. Sergeant? Yes, ma'am. That was Johnny just then. He wanted to make sure I was going to meet him. When? 5.30 in Lake Park. Which side, miss? The west side. Sergeant, I could hardly understand him. He said he was sick. Ma'am? He sounded sick, too. Terribly sick. It can't be true. I hope to God it's not true. What's that? The narcotics he stole from that man. You say they were powerful? Yes, ma'am, we did. Johnny's been taking them for two days. <laughs>